Well, it's personal between me and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing games been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT. And I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, this is my official post fight review for Conor Ben versus Pete Dobson. As you guys know, the result of the fight is a Conor Ben unanimous decision. So let's talk about it. I know it's a bit of a late post fight review because you know I was running around getting you guys content, interviews shorts the whole nine yards right so go check out all that if you haven't done so already but you know i'm not going to say i'm surprised at all about how the fight played out um i i knew pete dobson as, as i told you guys about the whole week i knew pete dobson had the skills to not just compete with conor ben but even beat him right but it became it became very evident throughout the, the course of many rounds in this fight that while pete had the skills to compete with conor ben and maybe even beat him he just didn't have the condition, which is something I, I, I highlighted in my lives and in videos. I, I did question uh, if his conditioning would be enough to get him over the hump. But I knew he had the skills and he was competent enough to, to make it a fight. And, and it's, it, was, it was a fun fight. You know, I think Pete got off to a bit of a slow start and Conor Ben took a great, a great advantage of that in the early rounds. Banking those early rounds. Um, you know, even try, even I think I thought Conor did a good job establishing his rhythm early in the fight. You know, fainting Pete. Um, just doing some really good things in there, letting his hands go and, and was able to, you know, run Peter into some good shots. Um, I thought it took Pete probably about two and a half to three rounds to really get going. But once he got going and, and he got the range down and, and, and started to counter punch him, you saw um, the same flaws I've been talking about with Conor Ben uh, being exposed. You know, um, can't really defend the straight right hand that that well, um, you know, was, was getting his body worked uh, really well in the middle rounds. And then, you know, he made some adjustments and I, I thought, you know, he did he didn't have to win the fight down the stretch. Uh, he, he won the fight, you know, so, uh, you know, it's weird because Conor Ben did beat Pete Dobson, right? But I think not for me, right? Because I, I know Pete. I, I'm very familiar with his career. I've seen him spar a couple times with his camp. So I had an idea what the fight could be like. And so the, the outcome didn't, didn't surprise me. But, you know, like to the rest of the world. You know, I thought Matchroom Boxing and the Zone, uh, they did a great job of, of convincing people that Conor Ben was um, going to iron out Pete Dobson in a round or two or three. And uh, a lot of people bought into it. And I said, guys, don't buy into it. You know, he's not going to, you know, he, he, he may stop him, but it won't be as early as you think even if it does happen. Right. And so I think just because the expectation was so much higher for Conor Ben than it was Pete Dobson. Pete Dobson actually wound up getting, I, I, based on what I've seen on social media and in my comment section of videos, I feel like Pete's actually getting more credit than Conor Ben, in a, than, than, than Conor ben is getting in a win. So, um, you know, look, Conor Ben, he's got that ambition to go fight the top, the, the, the biggest names in the welterweight division, to push onwards and upwards and become a champion. And, and you know, um, in the post-fight press conference, you know, Bill Haney came up to him and, you know, Tease the idea of a Devin Haney fight at 147. So there's options for Conor Ben. He could fight Chris Eubank. He could fight uh, Devin Haney. There's there, there's a lot of options for him. But I just think that um, if he steps up any more in levels, because Pete Dobson's a gotta remember. You guys gotta remember this. And this is not an excuse. I'm not making an excuse for him. He lost the fight. There's no two ways about it. He lost the fight. But gotta remember, this is a guy that is 33 years old. He hasn't fought for two years. And and uh, there were some rounds where Conor Ben clearly was getting. You know, for lack of a better term, he was getting his shit pushed back. He was having a hard time dealing with Pete Dobson at times in that fight. So if he's, if he's fighting a more active hit wall to weight, someone who's younger, fresher than Pete, uh, maybe has a higher skill level than Pete, higher punch output than Pete, then what, well, how does he cope with that, you know? We'll see. Time is the best teller. But I think on a positive note for Conor Ben, at least Conor got the 12 rounds. Yeah, he, he had been 12 rounds. Sometimes fighters, no matter how much training they do and how much sparring they do, they don't really know how they're going to cope with 12 rounds under the lights until they actually go ahead and they, and they do it. And Conor Ben coped with the 12 rounds just fine and, and you know, didn't look like he was, he was that gassed, you know. So um, shout out to him. You know, good, good performance, good fight. All around, a good fight. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it because I feel like Conor Ben gets to grow from this. I feel like Pete Dobson, you know, even in a loss, his, not, his, his reputation now is enhanced because he got to fight on a big stage. Here in Vegas against a known name in the welterweight division, and like a lot of the comments I've been seeing on my on my interview with him, and go check it out. It's it's doing great. You know, it's one of the uh, top videos, might be the top video from all of Fight Week. You know, um, as far as 
after the fight from all the channels, like, you know, my channel, you know, Fight Hype, all those other channels, right? But, like, I, in looking at the comments, a lot of people are saying they want to see him fight again. They want to see Pete Thompson fight again. They think Matt Trump should sign him and, and give him a chance to, you know, uh, you know, be be active and, and and become a more match fit fighter, and, and you know, just give him a chance to maybe build himself a little bit and put him in some more good fights. So, I'm with that. I'm with that. I thought he accounted himself very well. You know, like uh, not everyone's Angelo Leo, where you could have a two year layoff and come back and just look like nothing, nothing ever happened. That's a that's an outlier. But but most fighters with that kind of a layoff are not going to fight that well as Pete Dobson did. And I, you know, I think I think he earned a lot of respect in the loss and. His reputation is enhanced, and there's some good fights out there for him. I know, like, um, just if we go through the matchroom stable, like, you could you, you could obviously put Pete in there with one of the guys that pulled out, like McCormick or Jarko, which is what I think matchroom might do if they bring him back. Or, you know, I would personally like to see Pete Dobson fight um, Kona Walker, you know, who just fought on the, what was that card? I can't remember the name. Of, I can't remember who fought on that card. There was a British card recently. Kona Walker, he's a, this welterweight from... Um, I think Wolverhampton or, or Birmingham or somewhere out there in like the black country Midlands area of the UK. Uh, I wouldn't mind that fight for Pete. I think, you know, it'd be a good fight. Kona Walker's looking for a step up. Pete Dobson is a step up. Um, he's, a, he's a good fighter as he showed against Conor Ben. And um, he's ranked. So I feel like that's a good fight. And then if, you know, Kona Walker can pass that test, I get that makes him better. If Pete Dobson passes that test, then all of a sudden Pete Dobson's stock Rise high in the world with division. So I would, I would like that fight for, for Pete Dobson if, if Eddie Hearn and the fine folks at Matchroom could go ahead and, you know, um, make it happen. But as far as Conor Ben, I'll say it like this. Um, I think they should do that Chris Eubank Jr. fight next. If I'm Eddie Hearn, I'm doing that Chris Eubank Jr. fight next because the reality is um, if Conor Ben steps it up another level in the welterweight division, and I know I know people people say this every fight about him, but I really believe this. If he steps it up another level, like if he, stop, if he fights like – Anyone in the top ten, like like even like a Cody Crowley type of opponent, um, he's liable to lose. You know, honestly, because the there's some there's some things that just haven't been corrected, and um, it's being found out fight by fight. So I just think, look, if if you want to make the most money you can, there's options to go ahead and make the Eubank and Conor Ben fight. You can make it in the you you can actually try to go ahead and you know get the whole situation with the British Boxing Board of Control cleared up, or. You know, you can always go to Saudi. There's options out there for Eddie Hearn uh, to make that fight if you want to cash him out. But um, if that's what he, if that's the ultimate goal for Conor Ben to fight Chris Eubank and make money, then you, you need to do it next because you, you don't want to have him lose and all of a sudden that fight's not as attractive as it once was. You know what I'm saying? So, um, look, there's a lot of options for him. I mentioned Adrian Brown at the press conference for for, for Eubank because he's ranked at welterweight now. So there's a lot of lot of options for for uh, Conor Ben. But I would just – I would I think personally um, – let me see, I'm trying to think who, who would be who, who would be like a legit test for him that's a higher level than Pete Dobson in the division. I mean, I know he called out Mario Barrios. I, I, I would like that fight. Mario Barrios would be a good fight, even though I know he's a PBC, so you know, uh, he called him out in Spanish, be a cool little fight. Um, again, a lot of options, but you guys get the point. Good fight. Connor Ben gets the 12 rounds. Pete Dobson gets his respect, enhanced reputation. And um, last thing about Pete. When I was walking to go do my interview with him, um, I walked past a lot of the matchroom executives on the way there, and I overheard them talking about Pete, saying that pretty much they, they liked the performance, and they spoke positively about him, and it sounds like they're going to bring him back. So you all can make of that what you will. Um, shout out to Conor Ben, came to America, got a win in a, in, a, in a fun fight. Pete Dobson, you know, two-year layoff, performed well, counted himself well. People, people now know he can fight. And they know that his name is nothing, nothing to be played with, um, and that he's not a punk or anything like that, like like they thought. So, um, you know, make it that what you will. Let, let, let me know what you guys thought. What did you guys think of the fight uh, from the Conor Ben side of things, from the Pete Dobson side of things? I want to hear what, what you guys got to say. There will be an aftermath live on this later today. I'm not sure what time, but it'll be sometime at night. So um, stay tuned for that. We'll talk a lot more in depth about Conor Ben and Pete Dobson and all those things. But um, for the time being, leave your comments down below. Make sure you guys. Take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take your eyes. Thank you for watching another video on the untouchable True School Sports Empire. For more great boxing content just like this video, click right here and make sure you subscribe. Much love from sunny South Florida.